Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I have me right here, Power Colors Mini Pro eGPU. Now this is brand new for 2020. It has the latest seven nanometer RX 5700. If you don't know, the 5700M is actually rumored to be the GPU for the 2020 MacBook Pro. So very, very interesting to find out the performance of this. And look at it right there. It says right on the box, made for Mac OS Catalina. And la 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 la. Catalina is there for you to be supported. But my friends, it also works on Windows. So this tiny fella is hitting around 30 frames a second, 4K ultra resolution. So I've actually been testing it on both a Windows computer as well as a MacBook Pro. This is the 16 inch, the latest and greatest. Interesting to find out how good it is. I'd say great for a Mac mini. Great for a 16 inch for certain cases. I'll let you know what the cases are very, very soon. So let's start with this tiny, look, look how small this eGPU is. And my favorite feature of this eGPU, they've taken a power supply, this heat generating monster, and they've made it external. So you've got an external, external power supply for your eGPU. It plugs in like that, very, very simple. By default, it is a bit noisy. Noise Noisy is my 16 inch MacBook Pro. That guy is a beast and a half, but you can easily unplug the fan. So what I'm gonna do is modify it slightly. And you can see that the fan is there and it's just connected by this pin. So I'm just gonna unplug that. So now I'm gonna run it and see how it performs with no fan noise. You can easily unplug the fan, that's right there. I just unplugged it, works just as normal, no difference in the world, and it works just fine. The GPU itself does have a fan and it spins around just there every now and then when you're hitting it hard. But the noise levels, they're about probably three quarters less than the maximum of a MacBook Pro. It sounds about like when the MacBook Pro is going around 3000 RPMs, so it's not noisy whatsoever. You can even use a two meter cable, put it, hide it away, throw it away. Personally, I use a 0.5 meter cable because it isn't noisy whatsoever and I'm very, very sensitive to noise. So I'm very happy about that. Now regarding this, this, this unit, this has to be the tiniest eGPU I've used in my life. Just look how tiny and compact this little fella is. GPU already pre-installed, although you can unscrew it and change it out later. That's where the power supply goes in. It's got a big fan on the GPU already. The PSU itself is gigantic. It's almost as big as the eGPU. You get two extra USB ports. You also get a, a gigabit ethernet port on the side there. And again, a full fat RX 5700 GPU. Very, very tasty. Sounds very, very good. So you just plug these pins into the side of the box over here. And you can tell which side to plug it in because you get arches on the power adapters there. So you match the arches with the arches and it plugs in one way like this. Boom, explosion. Next up you get the power cable and just plug it in on the other side. And you have an on switch there. So regarding the performance, I've got my figures right here. Geekbench, our favorite tantalizing benchmarking application. The metal went from 30,000 on my full, fully upgraded eight gigabytes, 5,500M, all the way up to 55,000. So you get an improvement in metal performance over there. Luxmark 3D rendering, the test over there, that went from 10K, 9,700 to be precise, all the way to 25,000. That's a two and a half X performance. If you're doing Luxmarkery, heavy, heavy processing on the GP, GPU, kind of like mathematics. Final Cut Pro people, I'm sorry, I didn't get any performance benefits from this one. I think it's also related to Final Cut Pro. The software has been really, really badly optimized ever since they upgraded to Metal. So maybe in the next few versions it will improve, but for now the state of play, there's no performance improvements there. Grid gaming, I did some Mac OS gaming on this. It was very, very interesting, I gotta say. So the frame rate by default in my maxed out GPU is 51 frames a second, 55 frames a second, 52 frames a second, but fan noise city. When I put the eGPU in, the frame rate dropped. It actually dropped to 35 frames a second. Not sure why that is. I was using it with an old game grid, grid racing. However, there was no fan noise whatsoever. So it's a completely cooler experience, but loss of a frame rate. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense to me. 
it should be faster. <laughs> maybe it's just the game that I played. It was from 2015, so maybe the newer games will perform better, but that is the state of play. Fan noise versus frame rate. Now, where I got the biggest benefits was Unreal Engine. Now, Unreal Engine uses the CPU and GPU at the same time. It's a game development package, so it allows you to make games, Unreal, Epic, all that kind of good stuff. All the best games are made of Unreal Engine. That guy, very, very interesting. So when I was compiling shaders, typically my CPU throttles all the way down to 2.1 gigahertz. Now I've got the 2.4 i9 base clock, yeah? So it shouldn't go less than 2.4 gigahertz, but with Unreal Engine, because it uses this GPU at the same time as the CPU, the power management needs to shift the power away from the CPU and give it to the GPU, which means there's less power for the CPU, which means the CPU throttles which means it only goes 2.1 gigahertz. So when I plugged in the eGPU for that case, I actually got almost three gigahertz of compiling shader performance on the CPU because it can offload all of the GPU tasks, turn off my discrete GPU, the 5500M, allow all the power to go to the CPU and push all the GPU tasks to the external GPUs. So if you're doing come on, game development, stuff of that nature, stuff that uses the CPU and GPU at the same time, you will get a nice benefit in macOS from an eGPU, even if you have the latest and best 5500M 8GB VRAM graphics. Of course, if you have an older MacBook Pro, a 13-inch MacBook Pro, any Mac Mini, anything of that nature, you're gonna get heaps of benefits from this guy, I gotta say, is the quietest eGPU I've had, especially when you turn off, when you get rid of the fan. Maybe, I don't know, I, I, don't, use, I don't use the fan. Regarding boot camp, unfortunately, I cannot get my 16 incher to work with boot camp. I previously managed to get my 15 incher to do it. Other MacBook Pros, the 13 inches should perform better. Mac Mini should perform better. There's just a conflict between the, 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 the AMD graphics, the 5500 and the AMD graphics here. So I can get it working. People on eGPU.io, they have said they've managed to get it working, required some hacking of the booting up. I couldn't figure it out. But if you do have a Windows laptop, this is the Razer Blade Stealth 13 incher. Really, really gorgeous device. Yep, it works on one of these and it's really, really cool actually because the thing with this device itself, it's got two GPUs. It's got the Intel GPU, the one that comes built into the processor. It's also got a discrete GPU, an Nvidia one. The problem is, however, by default, the Nvidia GPU is on, which means it uses up at least at the lowest 10 watts, which means the CPU can only turbo to eat up 12 watts. When you disable the NVIDIA GPU, the CPU can boost all the way up to using 25 watts. So by using an eGPU, you get the best of both worlds. You get the best graphics and the best CPU performance. There you go, we got 4K ultra quality benchmark. So this tiny fella is hitting around 30 frames a second, 4K ultra resolution this tiny little beast. So on average, we're getting around 33 frames a second. This tiny little beast, 4K quality, ultra amazing. So that, that's pretty much it. That's the main benefits of having an eGPU with the laptops. You get to turn off the extra bloat, the Nvidia bloat out of this guy, the AMD bloat out of this guy, and really give the power back to your CPUs, push all the graphics onto this eGPU. For the latest MacBook Pros, probably, unless you hate fan noise, probably your 5500 is more than good enough, especially from the benchmarks I've explained to you where you got the performance wins. Anything older than this, definitely an eGPU will help you out. 13 inches like this guy, definitely an eGPU will help you out. It will help your CPU get more performance out of it and it will boost your graphics to the realms of 1440p, even 4K and you'll have a nice, nice experience. Very, very small, very, very light, very, very quiet. And with the external power brick sucking up all of the heat, it's a, it's a great little unit, I do like it. One thing I'd say is, if you're thinking about upgrading the GPU inside down the road, it does use the mini GPU form factor. And you can also get rid of these screws and install a different mini GPU although they're very limited, but that's what it looks like from the inside. It's all compact, packed, all that kind of goodness. So you won't get the latest and greatest graphics cards, but for its size, I gotta say it's pretty damn good. All right, so that was the 5700 powered Mini Pro from PowerColor. Let me know what you think of it and what eGPUs you guys are rocking to make your laptops super pros. Hope you guys enjoyed the show.